Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. It's uh, late afternoon, uh, turning toward early evening here at Hinokicho Park. Very hot and humid day today. Starting to cool down a little bit right now. Uh, though it's hot, we still don't have the, the full volume of insects in effect. That should uh, get to us by next week or so. Uh, yeah, nice quiet evening, nice time to come here to the park. Uh, today and yesterday have kind of been uh, out of commission. Uh, I got my second COVID vaccination shot Saturday morning. And uh, the shot went well uh, through the day. Uh, I, I spent some time playing with my daughter and doing a few other things. And toward the evening, I began to feel a little bit funny, but not bad. And uh, I went to sleep and a little trouble getting to sleep. And then I woke up about an hour later with a fever. And this fever got uh, worse and worse and got up, up a little bit above 40 degrees. I had uh, uh, chills and, and chattering teeth and I was freezing to death. So I had like uh, turn off the air conditioner and cover myself with blankets and uh, open the, the windows to let in this uh, warm, humid Tokyo summer weather come in. And still, I was quite cold. And uh, this fever persisted through the entire night, so no sleep at all, and then through uh, most of the next day, uh, I just felt uh, totally worn out. Uh, by last night, I started to feel a little little bit better, uh, got to bed, and finally fell asleep about one o'clock in the morning. And then I got up this morning, uh, I wasn't sick anymore, but I just felt kind of worn out uh, from my body uh, fighting off the, I guess, uh, fever of yesterday. Uh, earlier today, I've been kind of relaxing and not doing much and letting my body recover and now I feel a little bit better and it's not so hot outside, I decided to come out and uh, make a video. Uh, it's a nice night here at the park and after I finish making this video, I plan to go to the little restaurant which is located nearby. Uh, uh, this restaurant is set up under the trees uh, opposite the Midtown Shopping Center and they have some uh, nice tables, chairs, and sofas, and things like that. And the lamps look very beautiful uh, in the evening, kind of like the lamps which they have at the summer festivals here in Japan. And uh, the food is quite good. Uh, the food is prepared by the, the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, which is across the street. And uh, you can imagine that they make pretty good food at the restaurants there. Uh, they prepare it there and they bring it down the elevators from the, was they're on like on the 56th floor or something like that. They bring it down here and bring it in carts these little trailer like things where they they dish it out to us uh customers and uh, quite delicious uh, the menu is interesting uh some of the things uh, are the same as last year like the roast beef but uh, this year they have a couple of new additions the the garlic shrimp on the bottom looks quite tasty uh, kind of like the stuff that they sell in the trucks lunch trucks in hawaii and then they have this thing on the bottom left of the menu which kind of looks like a, uh, a crispy fish in a hot dog bun and what it says is uh, Asa hot dog, which, I, which just means, I guess, uh, fish hot dog. And these fish are kind of uh, uh, a delicacy here in the summertime, at least for you know old timers who come from the days when food was hard to find and more expensive. They're just simple river fish uh, covered with salt, and they normally put a, a stick through them and put them next to charcoal and, and cook them for a while and, and sell them at the festivals. And uh, a lot of people here in Japan love them. Uh, for myself, they are like they taste like mushy fish flavored cardboard. Uh, I'm not with crunchy parts inside. Uh, I, 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 just not my cup of tea. Uh, but uh, I think I'll, I'll try out the uh, uh, garlic shrimp because um, was it the Giovanni's garlic shrimp in Oahu near the North Shore is quite delicious. I like to go there uh, despite all the chickens running around and all that. And I hope that the stuff that they uh, have here at the, the restaurant, the park is quite good. Uh, after I have dinner, I'll go and relax and cool down a little bit at the Zen Park, which they have set up next door. This is a kind of imitation of the stone Zen or Zen stone gardens, which they have set up in uh, Western Japan near Kyoto and such, which have the big volcanic rocks in the center and kind of like a sea of little tiny gray rocks, which are, I guess, raked into beautiful patterns. Uh, here at the park, these big volcanic rocks are actually just made out of uh, metal mesh with lights on the inside. Instead of having the gray rocks in the bottom, they have this gray water mist which comes out and makes it nice and cool. So it's nice and relaxing and you can listen to like the Zen music in the background. And uh, it's something I, uh, I'll do. It's something that I enjoy with my family every summer here. So uh, anyway, uh, that's what it's like here uh, tonight. Go ahead and get started on the subject of today's video, which is going to be a really uh, cool uh, Olympus camera. This is going to be the Olympus FTL, 
which dates from 1971-1972 here in Japan. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, which is called japanvintagecamera.com. And I also have an Etsy store, and my Etsy store is also called a Japan Vintage Camera. You can find links to my stores in the description below the video. Uh, this camera has uh, some work which needs to be done to it yet, and hopefully I can have it listed for sale at the end of this week or maybe early next week. So, uh, the Olympus FTL, as I said, was introduced in 1970 and discontinued in 1972. And it's a really odd camera uh, for a number of reasons. First, the short production run. And then the fact that it seems to have been uh, developed and sold right alongside uh, the Olympus OM-1 camera, which was introduced the same year. Uh, I'm not really sure what the logic is to this. Uh, a lot of people here in Japan have uh, conflicting reports or opinions, probably is what they are, about what happened and why uh, these cameras were brought out. Uh, some people say that you know, Olympus held some kind of uh, a design competition between separate teams and decided to uh, yeah, uh, uh, market the ones which was uh, the best or try marketing them and see which ones sold better. And, of course, the OM-1, as we all know, is a really wonderful camera. And it would be hard to find uh, pretty much anything from any maker you know, which would uh, compete with it, let alone uh, the poor FTL here. And then there are people who say that this wasn't an Olympus product at all. Uh, Yoshihisa Maitani, who is uh, the chief designer for Olympus, said that this camera was not designed by Olympus. It, the design was purchased from another maker. And uh, I'm not really sure which which story is true, but I'm inclined to, to believe Mr. Maitani. Uh, I've got the OM3 Thai camera, which is kind of on loan uh, to uh, someone, uh, which was signed by him with his famous diamond pencil on the back of the camera. It has his, uh, his signature. And quite a, uh, used to go to different uh, photography events and things like that, and he carried this diamond pin, which was made for him by Olympus. Uh, he signed a few cameras. And these are quite a sought after by collectors nowadays, and I was really lucky to find one, um, uh, yeah, uh, something which I will keep a hold of. Uh, maybe one day I can be convinced to uh, make a video about it. So, uh, as I said, uh, this was introduced in 1971, ended in 1972, and it, it just, you know, it, it, it just wasn't marketable. And when you look at it, you can kind of see that why. It's, there's nothing really special or unique about this camera. It looks very much like Canon, Minolta, uh, Pintax, other cameras, the Air. There's nothing that really stands out uh, about this camera. Uh, the controls, the layout, everything is very similar to other cameras. And uh, uh, the way to compete with people is not so much to copy them, but to try to beat them, which is what uh, Maitani did with the OM-1 series cameras. Let's go ahead and look at the features, controls, and functions of the FTL starting at the top. Uh, here we have the film rewind knob with a pop-out uh, lever. And this is a little bit Olympus-like. It, it's a little bit thick compared to other Olympus cameras, but the top looks exactly like the lever you find on, say, the Olympus RC, uh, the RD, the DC, or the SP. Uh, we have this switch here on the side, which actually looks like something which I've seen on uh, Minolta cameras, the SRT series, because it has a battery check uh, function on the bottom, and similar to what I see on Canon cameras. On the top here, we have a built-in uh, hot shoe for the flash, which is much different than what we have on the, the OM-1. Uh, you can use a modern flash on this, or you should be able to use one. If you're using an earlier vintage flash and you can't get the hot shoe to work, there's a sink socket located on the side here, under my finger. Over to the right side here, we have the the first major departure from the OM series is having a, a conventional uh, shutter speed dial located on the top. On the OM series, they put it around the lens mount. And this is very similar to the Canon, Nikon, or Minolta cameras with an external ring, which you use to set the shutter speeds, and then a internal ring here, which you use to uh, set the film speed. Over here, we have a shutter release button with a standard, court, a standard which accepts a standard cable release, excuse me. And over here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever, and this cap on the top uh, looks suspiciously like what you find on a Canon SLR camera in the FT series. On the back of the camera here you have a nice large viewfinder window, and the viewfinder in this camera is quite large and bright. Uh, it's very opposite to the one you have in the OM series, because in the light meter on this one, the readout is on the right, and in the OM series it's on the left. Uh, that's another difference, and this camera does not uh, feature interchangeable focusing screens like the OM series. 
On the bottom here we have a battery chamber cover and this comes off and you normally use an MR9 battery in this camera. You can use a PX625 or you can use an LR44 or SR44 battery with an app adapter. One thing that makes me believe that this wasn't a Olympus design camera is the design of the electrical contact in the battery chamber. It sounds like kind of a, a geeky thing to notice but when I Remove the battery cap here, and the battery cap is the same battery cap that you find on other Olympus cameras, and this interchanges with other Olympus cameras, but the battery contact is different. And it's very short and small and fits in the center, and the only way, the only way you can use the meter in this is to either use an MR9 style battery, PX625 battery, or an adapter. Whereas with the other Olympus cameras, including the OM1, you can just simply drop in an LR44 battery and just carefully thread on the cap and it will work. You know, the, uh, the way the battery cap is designed and the contact is designed, there's enough tension that you don't need to use an adapter to use uh, a regular LR44 battery in these cameras. Another thing which uh, makes me believe that this is not an Olympus design is the slow speed escapement, which is very prone to sticking and is the Achilles heel of the FTL camera. Uh, and this other cameras like the Minol uh, not no, the Canon FT series uh, feature the same problem though they seem to be a little bit more reliable in the Minolta cameras or excuse me Canon cameras than in this camera. Uh, the big thing which sets this camera apart from other Olympus cameras or pretty much every other maker is the lens mount. Now this is a M42 camera so you can use M42 screw mount lenses. And uh, of course, it's uh, Olympus only made a few lenses for the FTL, but since you can use uh, an M42 lens on this, there's pretty much endless possibilities when it comes to lenses. Uh, the lens on this particular camera is a little bit unique because uh, the FTL featured a through the lens uh, metering system. And in order for the uh, camera to work properly and uh, to get the most accurate reading for the light meter, uh, the lens has to be centered quite uh, accurately. And there's a slot inside the uh, lens mount and a release button here on the front. And this precisely lines up the lens so uh, uh, the connection between the light meter and the lens diaphragm is solid and accurate. Uh, I haven't tried this with another M42 lens. I've got a few at home out of curiosity. I'll give it a try and see what happens. Uh, unlike the OM mount lenses, we have the aperture ring located here near the base and it has no detents in it like the OM series. The OM lenses aperture ring is located on the front. But like the OM camera, we have a, a stop down button on the lens instead of being located on the camera. So uh, that's kind of a very Olympus feature. Uh, as far as performance goes, uh, this is a this camera can perform quite well, mainly because it does have Olympus designed lenses. This is the F Zuiko uh, 50 mm f1.8 lens, and from what I can tell by looking at it, it looks like the same formula is the OM series. And the OM 50 mm f1.8 lens is one of my favorite 50 mm lenses. It's the cheapest, the commonest, the most plentiful, but it's a really super performer. And uh, a lot of people pay a lot more money for uh, more rare or fast, you know, rarer or faster lenses, but these don't necessarily perform better than you know the 15 or 25 dollar 50 millimeter f1.8 Zuiko lens. A lot of people would, might prefer the OM series because of their reputation for uh, smooth operating and quiet operation. But uh, I found that this camera is uh, remarkably quiet and very smooth. I didn't expect it to be as smooth and quiet as this as it is, and uh, I think that might have to do a little bit with its uh, size and the amount of metal in this camera that it kind of absorbs the noise rather than letting it radiate. Uh, the Olympus OM series is a very small and compact camera, a lot smaller and a lot lighter than this. And they have, they're have wonderfully smooth camera. It was uh, the Olympus SLR attempt at being a Leica M camera. And uh, it was a wonderful camera. The FTL is pretty much, it's uh, unique is probably the best word and the most polite word I can use to, uh, to describe this camera. If you can find one of these cameras, it's definitely worthwhile to have it and to shoot it because it can take really excellent photographs. Uh, the, through the, the TTL meter is a really wonderful uh, feature in these cameras and allows you to get really good exposures. Uh, but be warned, you have to use a, uh, uh, a 1.3 volt battery. Uh, the best way to do this is either to install a diode uh, in the camera. You can remove the bottom cover and just solder in the diode between the contact 
and uh, and the power line going to the meter, and that'll give you 1.3 volts. They they sell these on eBay. If you're handy with a soldering gun, you can put them in, or if you hunt around, you can find these uh, MR9 adapters, which allow you to use a LR44 or SR44 battery, and they stop down the battery to the correct 1.3 volts. If you use a 1.5 volt battery in this, you're likely to see your exposure off by uh, maybe two stops. And sometimes, uh, you know it. It varies because these cameras are quite old, but it's likely not going to be very accurate. Uh, there weren't a lot of Olympus lenses made for these cameras. Uh, as far as I know, there was a 28mm lens, a 35mm lens, two 50mm lenses, a uh, 135mm lens, and a 200mm lens. Uh, the cameras are rare, the lenses are much more rare, especially the non-standard uh, lenses. Uh, the typical lens you see on these is the 50mm f1.8. On occasion I see the f1.4 lenses. These are scarce and tend to get a fair amount of money. Uh, I rarely come across one of these cameras that actually works, uh, mainly because of the, the, the slow speed problem. And uh, I, I'm, I've got to get into uh, working on these and see if I can get them apart. For, for myself it's just not you know, too economical if it needs too much work. Uh, to get it going because I, I can't really sell them enough for enough to pay for the, the labor I put into them but uh, hopefully this one won't need too much work. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for my review for the uh, Olympus FTL camera. I plan to do more reviews soon. Uh, now that I, uh, uh, I'm not, well, uh, for whatever reason, I, I plan to do more videos soon so uh, keep tuned if you want to see them. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon. Hmm. <clears throat>